It is March Madness. North Carolina, Kansas, Duke, City College. As silly as it sounds, there was a time when City College was the dominant force in college basketball. And then it all fell apart. In 1950, Coach Nat Holman, now in the Basketball Hall of Fame, had a winner. Having a much more diverse team than many of the more segregated colleges of the day, the Beavers' starting lineup, featuring two black players and three Jewish players, steamrolled their way to the championship of both the NIT tournament and the NCAA tournament, along the way beating the likes of Boston College, Princeton, Kentucky, and Ohio State. The Beavers won the National Invitation Tournament, the National Collegiate, to hit a jackpot unprecedented in basketball. Nowadays, teams aren't even allowed to compete in both tournaments. So as it stands, the 1950 CCNY Beavers go down in history as the only team to win both titles in the same season. The grand slam of college basketball. But the glory was short-lived. It turns out that magical season was beset by gambling, bribes, and the mafia. And not just for City College. Mobsters had been bribing college players, not to lose games necessarily, but to win by less than the bookmakers predicted. And then the gamblers could bet on this more of a sure thing outcome. This scheme is called point shaving. And to this day, the scandal is still widely remembered in popular culture. He passed during the night. What a f blow. He was a great man. My cousin told me it was Carmine who invented point shaving. CCNY versus Kentucky, 1951. Nobody beat the spread. I bought a black fleet one. And after a police sting the next year, all the dominoes started to fall. When the dust settled, eight gamblers and fixers and 32 players from seven colleges were arrested. City College actually didn't even have the most players involved, but as the darlings of the basketball world, their fall was certainly the hardest. In the aftermath, CCNY as a whole de-emphasized athletics and then dropped down to Division III, where we find ourselves today. It's a complicated legacy, that 1950 team. After all, the players weren't losing games on purpose. And certainly, all the recruiting scandals and talk of player compensation in college sports today can often seem just as troublesome. Indeed, for all the drama, the 1950 champion team still holds a special place in the hearts of fans. And now, looking back on its 70th anniversary, the last surviving member of the team, Floyd Lane, was honored with a standing ovation during this season's basketball tip-off banquet. Thank you all very much. For the record, I'm Ari Goldberg.